Hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade and today we want to talk about a, a, a lesser known walk along beat em up arcade game. Once again I'm sorry to always delve back into my own personal history but first time I came across this was in Beckton in Canning, um, sorry in Custom House or whatever it is uh, in Newham and me and my brother were in the area there and we'd gone to some big boot sale type thing there and right in the back while our parents were out shopping we found this arcade game at the back and it was treated badly. It's covered in dirt. It was um, break, break knocked around, there was a crack on the screen, and it turned out to be Asterix the arcade game, a game that at that point I did not know exists, uh, existed. We must have played it for about 15, 20 minutes, and it was only 20p ago, and at the time, that even then, that was stupidly cheap. So, all that time, we were sort of thinking to ourselves, oh, this is really playable. We'd learned about Asterix at school, there'd been the books, the, the kind of graphic novels, sort of comics, and we were really, really happy. And then we never saw it again for about four years. And of course, this was pre-internet, or pre-standard internet anyway. We are talking about the very early 90s. And therefore, to a point, we didn't know whether it really existed. It was one of those slightly mythical arcade machines that never appeared again. And I never saw it again for the rest of my life. I'd never seen the arcade again my whole entire life. Until one day, <coughs> in a copy of Retro Gamer, in my very late 20s, I suddenly noticed that the game actually did exist and I'd completely forgotten about it. And it turned out it didn't only exist, it had been sold in multiple countries, but sold so badly uh, from Konami, that they are on the screen, that they pretty much pulled the plug on the entire project and it was ceased production very early on. But the real cracking chain was, it was a bloody good game. It utilised lots of the graphics from the original stories and novels. It was, you know, crafted by some people that were actually inv involved in the original comic books. And it was based on the comics as well. A lot of work, time and presumably finance was put into this game. And with games that, uh, that were being released at, uh, you know, prior to this, such as we've mentioned on the channel, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Simpsons, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, these games, these walk-along beat-em-ups, you could see the thought process behind releasing this license. And Konami presumably paid heavily for the Asterix license to be used. You know, Asterix, for those that don't know, is a story about some French people, or Gauls, during the Roman Empire that are fighting off being invaded. And they're a very happy bunch with lots of puns in the names of a lot of the characters. But, you know, I've spoke for long enough, we'll get to the facts later on. We'll add some credits. That is an awful noise there. And we'll select the game, and we'll go into it. So who am I going to play as? I think we both know I'm going to play as Asterix. If I die, perhaps I'll switch to Obelix. But it's a two button configuration. Um, and we'll have a look. So, okay, we have a strange little dog. And we can beat up some Romans. So, first thing, again, I'm not going to have a go at this game because of the time it was released, it has to be said. But uh, just prior to this video, I was playing Cadillacs and Dinosaurs for the fifth time. Got, I seriously love that game. That is a game I've stumbled on by accident on this channel. I can quite honestly say it's one of the best games I've played in a very long time. But. This arcade machine right now, I can say, one thing that disappoint me, disappoints me is not seeing energy bars for the opponents. Um, again, shouldn't really complain, but given that that was already being utilised in a number of arcade games prior to this game's release in 1992, I'm not going to give it the excuse of age. Um, I'm not hugely certain what this chick's for, other than giving me a kiss. Bit weird. Uh, but again, haven't played this game I presume since about 1993, maybe even 94. Um, um, but I've got to say, right now, it, it still looks as good as it did in my mind. Obviously, the scan lines and stuff like that, you've got to take into account. We have some sort, I presume, that's a potion to make me super strong. Here we go, wallop. I had no control during that moment, I can quite honestly say. But I'm hoping right now we see some more inf we see some more actions that show this game as more than just a walk along beat map because otherwise I can see this getting pretty old pretty quick. Not having energy bars and not really having weapons to speak of. Is I can see this maybe lasting for a round or two, and maybe my infant brain was totally okay with that. But unfortunately, my brain in my 30s less keen. Got to say, less less keen. But. The license, I'll happily say, is very good indeed. Um, 
Konami did very well to get this. The only other Asterix game I ever played was on the Master System, and it was so-so. I'll be honest, it wasn't akin to this. It was more of a standard platformer rather than walk along beat 'em up. But no, no, those that have read the original comics and have played, uh, sorry, read the original comics or some of the movies that were made. Uh, well, we have a bonus stage. This I don't remember. Okay. Okay, so we can whip them. What am I doing here? So what am I doing here? Okay, sounds like House of the Dead. Oh dear. No bonus. I fell at the last hurdle. I literally fell at the last hurdle. Now this is quite a nice touch. Just pause there. The fact that it's giving me French and English. Now this actually leads quite neatly into the facts portion of this video because as always I like to talk about some of the background facts and trivia behind the games we feature here on Robbie, uh, Robbie's Arcade. So straight away, uh, Asterix the Arcade game was released in 1992 to limited worldwide release and by that I mean it was released in the, uh, the US and then a few token units were sent around the world with obviously uh, priority being to the east. Um, if you start uh, some tips, if you start playing the game as Obelix, he starts each stage, at the beginning of each stage, with one of those giant monoliths, those obelisks even, uh, which you can use to toss. And you only get one at the start of every level as Obelix. I kind of regret not selecting Obelix now. Um, as also an indication here of Act 2, every single level is based on a story in the Asterix um, a collection and there must be 20 or 30 different asterisk stories so i don't know how many levels this game features but i'm quite pleased to see that it, like this one asterisk in uh, uh, egypt was a very very good story it had uh, cleopatra as well um the game would never ever receive any home conversions unfortunately as i've already alluded to um it was only ever on the arcade um the popularity um, of the arcade genre in general there was hint at it reaching the snares but there was already um, Asterix games on other systems so the idea of porting this existing Ar um, Asterix game never really came to fruition because it didn't flourish in the arcades and even the home versions of previous Asterix games never really hit the mark and it didn't really have a, Asterix didn't really have much of a popular following uh, in the US which is kind of their big marketplace um, Although it is probably one of the best walk-along uh, beat-em-ups from Konami in that time period, because it never made an impact, it has a very niche, narrow following. It's never really had mods or different convert, uh, different versions out there, and there was certainly never a sequel. Um, another thing, we're not going to see the ending of the game, obviously, because uh, we'll keep these videos as tight as possible, but uh, at the end of the game, uh, and hopefully we'll do some endings on the channel as well, the end of the game leads to uh, a horse race after defeating a boss and you meet Caesar and Caesar congratulates you on completing it. Presumably that's a gladiatorial kind of level. And then the, the game ends in the same way every single book ends with everyone sat around a fire and the minstrel being tied up to a tree. And everyone lives happily ever after. Um, I should say the, I, let's see if I can turn it, Assurantorix, whoever that is, is tied up in the tree. And that really is it. I mean, facts-wise for Asterix, I'll be honest, I'm looking forward to see how level two pans out because right now, level one isn't looking great. You have to forgive me there. I've kind of ruined the screen there a bit. So, let's head back in, shall we? Right. Oh, we have some story. Nice. Okay, so we're back in the game. Is it... Is it just me, or does it seem remarkably cheap that they didn't refresh my energy? Call me crazy, but between levels, not, rechar not recharging my level and my energy is a pretty nasty thing, Konami. I'm a bit disappointed in you for that one, to be honest. Oh, wow. Also, am I right in thinking the energy bar's the wrong way round? Call me crazy, but... When I look at an energy bar, that is not the direction. I expect the yellow bit to be my energy. And apparently the red is my energy. I've been reading that very wrong indeed. And again, I'm not going to blame that on the game being old. Because this game came out after a large number of alternative games. There we go. I don't know what that gives me. Presumably health, who knows. I'll be honest, them tornadoes are really getting on my nerves. Hmm. 
No, now I, I mean, again, this is one of those games that's aged better in the mind than in reality. It's, it does feel oddly lacking. There's not a lot of textures. And once again, considering the games that were released around this at the same time, and I'm definitely looking at Capcom here, I'm pretty disappointed. This seems like a bit of a lackluster effort, in my opinion. Um, sadly, we can't change to Obelix at this time, which is a bit annoying. But, do you know what? Let's see how this second level ends, and we'll give it a go. But you can probably tell me in the future how well this goes based on how long this video is. Of course, I don't know at this time. But no, I've got to say, this is not the game I thought it would be. If I had to, I don't really do reviews and ratings on this channel, but if I did, right now we're looking at 5 or 6 out of 10. Um, and apart from that, I'll be honest, the reusing of sprites is bordering on the ridiculous now. I know that a lot of games during this time period would reuse a lot of um, digital assets, and I get that. But at the same time, I've, what, seen three different assets being utilised here? That does feel very lacklustre. Even the comics featured more characters than this. There's no excuse for Konami cheapening out, I'll be honest. Unless I see another character or another enemy who I haven't seen before in the next 15 seconds, I'm dropping this down to 5 out of 10 for me. Because right now this is starting to feel as repetitive as it must look to you. The lack of energy bars, the lack of items, the repetitive enemies. Oh, do you know what? A reprieve. We finally have a new enemy. I'll be honest, are they going to utilise the hell out of this? I think I'm still going to give this 5 out of 10. Because I don't exactly feel impressed by this at this time. You haven't even got a special move. You really do just have the same three moves. Jump. Standard attack and air attack. So jump isn't even really an attack. Do you know what? I'm probably going to wrap things up there, to be honest. I'm going to let these guys have their way with me. Because at the moment, it's not looking very likely that I'm going to make it. And the game automatically forces you to use the credit rather than let you change characters. I'm not a fan of that kind of thing either. But there you have it. That was Asterix the Arcade Game. If you're interested in seeing any more games on this channel featured from this era, maybe some real gems that no one's really heard about, then do let me know. But otherwise, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Pop it in the comments. But I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.